Welcome back and let's move straight into today in history, the 23rd of April, uh, many years ago. I'm actually just going back to two years ago in 2019 and sharing with you one of the breakthroughs or attempts rather to reduce the number of deaths uh, caused by malaria here in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, figures have showed that about 400,000 on the average die every year from malaria. It was on this day that a malaria vaccine pilot was launched in Malawi. The World Health Organization welcomed the government of Malawi's launch of its first malaria vaccine. The country at that time was the uh, first of three in Africa in which the vaccine, known as RTSS, will, uh, was made available to children up to two years of age. It, uh, of course, uh, like I said, remains one of the world's leading killers, claiming the life of one child every two minutes. Most of these deaths are in Africa, where more than 250,000 children die from the disease every year. And uh, worldwide, it kills about 400,000 plus people um, every year. Most of them, of course, are children. Uh, the WHO coordinated pilot program was a collaborative effort with ministries of health in Ghana, Kenya, and Malawi, and a, a range of uh, in country and international partners, including PATH, uh, which is a non profit organization. Um, it, of course, uh, aims uh, to reach about 360,000 children per year across these countries. Um, so, aside from Malawi, it also still did launch in Kenya and in Ghana. And um, was, uh, according to uh, the uh, trial results back then, was able to uh, solve malaria cases in four out of ten cases. Mm -hmm. um, this was just in 2019. I believe that there's still going to be more um, developments to this vaccine. And, uh, um, you know, we'll be able to increase from four to maybe eight or ten um, uh, cases out of ten that the vaccine can um, help solve. So, it's, it's, it's definitely good news. Yes, yes, yes. And we, we really need this vaccine. We, we really need this. I mean, I just I remember treating malaria, still suffering from the effects of that, yeah. all the injections. And I didn't even realize that injections could hurt, you know, your backside so bad, like causing the swelling and all of that. Really, mm. I, yeah, I didn't realize that until I called my doctor. I'm like, what's happening? I said, this has happened. So, so well, there's so much, you know, when it comes to malaria, it's, it kills a lot of people. In Nigeria, in Africa, we need a vaccine and we need a fast. So I, I wonder I mean, why, I wonder, see, I was, I was, you know, just thinking the other day, you know, coronavirus just, just happened recently and we have a vaccine now. And malaria, we've been suffering from malaria for many years. But really, when you look at it, it's not up to the Western nations to provide a vaccine for you. We need to invest in research. You know, we're talking about Glasgow Smith Klein and all these other, you know, multinationals and, you know, these big pharma companies. We need to invest in research. How can we solve African problems by Africans? You know, yeah. you, you should not wait for them to solve it for you. They don't have malaria over there. So you need to solve your problem and... We need it fast. Well, there's also a lot of factors that have made it difficult to um, handle, and that is also with the infrastructure across Africa. You know, malaria um, and uh, mosquitoes, rather, uh, thrive in you know, our climate a lot better. Uh, we have a lot of stagnant water um, around here also. And, and so some of all those factors have made it difficult uh, for us to actually deal with malaria. But these are things that we mosquitoes. can actually address. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But, you know, we need to get to that level of development uh, first. If you find mosquito nets that, that should be free, you go to the market to see them. They write not for sale, but they're telling you it's too gay. Yeah, well. You know, so... I... I, I and it's, it's, for a lot of people, it's shocking when they see these figures of what malaria does to the world every year. 400,000, 250,000 children every year in Africa. Um, when we grew up, we saw, I grew up, you know, with the mentality that malaria was just one of those things you have once a year or to every two years. Um, and it just comes and goes. You know, it was when I started to, you know, of course, get older, I started to realize that, no, it actually does kill a lot Yes, of and I know people who have died from taking fake malaria medication. It's, it's that bad. It's anyway, let's go to some light-hearted news now. 2005, and this day in history, April 23rd, that was when the first ever video was published on YouTube. It was published by the co-founder of YouTube. His name is Jawed Karim. He posted the video at around 8.31 p.m. And it was a video of him at the zoo. So he just titled it, Me at the Zoo, uploaded that video on YouTube. And... Uh, of course, people would say the quality of the video was poor and all of that. But this was the first ever video, remember, published on YouTube. And right now, YouTube has gone on to become the second most popular search engine in the world. I mean, many people use YouTube. You know, people use YouTube for, for advertisements. Lots of businesses use YouTube. You know, 
37% of all mobile internet traffic belongs to YouTube. And we know that in 2006, just a year later, uh, Google actually acquired YouTube for the sum of $1.665 billion. The total revenue of YouTube uh, came up to $151.1 billion uh, for the full year of 2019. Lots of money. Lots of so money is made on YouTube. Lots of money, you know. We have YouTubers, YouTube influencers, earning as much as three thousand eight hundred, almost four thousand, you know, dollars per video. The highest earner on the YouTube platform in 2019 is a YouTuber called Ryan Kaji. He raked in 26 million dollars from YouTube. Well, if yeah. you're an influencer, if you if you have about 500 to 5,000 subscribers, you can charge, you know, for product advertisements, you know, and all of that. Lots of people discover new products on YouTube. I, you know, for one, I watch lots of YouTube content, you know, travel, vlog, lifestyle, entertainment, news, politics, and all of that. So YouTube really is, is very big. But in countries like Germany, a large percentage of the most popular videos on YouTube can't, you know, be viewed in, those, in that country. I, I have no idea why. And the, one of the most disliked videos on YouTube, funny enough, <laughs> is Justin Bieber's song, Baby. It has about 11 million dislikes and counting. And one of oh, the most I've highest viewed videos is a song of, uh, I think, P. Diddy and uh, I can't remember the name of the song now, Despacito. Despacito. Yeah, you know, at some he point it was PSY's highest. Gangnam Style. Yeah, no, no, no. When it comes to Gangnam Style, Gangnam Style actually broke YouTube's yeah, right content is. border. Yeah. No, no, no. That, that video yeah. made waves. There was nothing really about the video. I think it was just popularity the funny of the dance. song. You know, yeah, it Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I really didn't even enjoy the dance or the song or anything, but... It you know, funny. it just broke all the records, you know, with regards to viewership. The colorful um, video, the colorful been, costume. All the colorful videos and colorful costumes. Stop being a hater, <laughs> Sergey. That video was I dope. mean, you know, this, this really just tells, um, you know, the success of digital marketing, digital yes. advertising, you know, and, Indeed. you know, digital some media. three guys in 2005 decided to create what we, you know, today have as YouTube. And, you know, from there, you know, it became a billion dollar company. And so it's, it's a great story to tell. But Facebook, funny enough, remains the biggest when it comes to, you know, video sharing, you know, YouTube comes next but most of the money to be made when it comes to digital content is on youtube absolutely all right that's what we have for you today in history um and uh, we hope that you enjoyed our little bits of information we'll take a short break when we come back we're moving into kaduna state there have been two abductions in the last 48 hours it's still conversations on security across the country and uh, we're going to be speaking this morning with the commissioner for internal security uh, samuel arawan is joining us from kaduna state to share uh, live updates on what's going on over there and um, you know what um, other uh, bits that we need to know stay with us <laughs> 